Sorry about that. The uh, my lecture cut out as I was recording on the other uh, on the first part of this one. So we'll revisit here, starting uh, with higher order derivatives. Okay, and what that really means. So for us, you know, a lot of the stuff we've talked about. We've been I've been giving you like a position function, okay, and then asking you to sorry about that. I hit the four there. Let's see. I've been giving you the position function, and uh, you know we've been taking the first derivative, and that actually tells us what velocity is. So position is s of t, and the velocity is going to be s prime of t. We can always write s prime of t as v of t. So if we have the position, so I want you to think of like a particle position, so if we've talked about it in your physics class or things like that, right, uh, you have a particle traversing some sort of type of path, and you know, that's its position. If we want to know the particle speed, we take the derivative of the position. If we want to find a particle's acceleration, or just, you know, something's acceleration in general, we take the derivative of the velocity. And we call that the second derivative. It's the second derivative of the position. So the derivative of velocity is acceleration. So we have position, which is s of t. We have velocity, which is s prime of t. And we have acceleration, okay, which is s double prime of t. Okay, so we have velocity, you know, average speed sort of scenario. We have acceleration, instantaneous speed. So when I ask you to find, you know, velocity, you take the first derivative of the function. If I ask you to find acceleration, we find the second derivative of the original function. Okay, so that's how it's going to kind of play out. You're going to do a lot of that kind of stuff in your physics class uh, later on as well. Okay, so just so we know, okay, the second derivative is usually, you know, we call that a of t, and it is always, you know, s double prime of t as well. It means the same thing. Uh, just like the first derivative is v of t or s prime of t, meaning the same thing. So when we start talking about higher order derivatives, it means that we can take, you know, uh, the, the fifth derivative of something or the sixth derivative of something as we're going through it. Okay, so, so on and so forth. So we can see, you know, if we take, you know, y prime or y double prime or y triple prime or y to the fourth, y to the fifth prime. So we're taking the nth derivative. We can take it, you know, however many powers we have. Now, it's, it kind of becomes obsolete once we get to zero on something, but that's really what a higher order derivative is. Okay, so let's do an example here. All right, we're going to find acceleration due to gravity, all right, real life type problem. So, if, since we know the moon does not have an atmosphere, all right, so we're going to read through this problem here. A falling object on the moon encounters no air resistance. So in 1971, astronaut David Scott demonstrated that a feather and a hammer fall at the same rate on the moon. Okay, the position function for each of these falling objects is given by the equation S of T equals negative... 0.81 t squared plus 2. All right, where s of t, the position, is the height in meters, and t is the time in seconds. It says, what is the ratio of the Earth's gravitational force to the moon's? Okay, so we're going to use this to make sure we know this equation here. So if we take a look, we need to find acceleration. So to find acceleration, we're going to take the second derivative of the position function here. All right, so we gotta take the first derivative and then the second derivative to find acceleration. Okay, so we should be able to take the first derivative here. Okay, so we take two times 0.81, all right? So that gives us the 1.62, it's negative, and the derivative of two is zero. Okay, so that's the velocity of the function. Okay, and then here, s double prime. So we're taking the derivative of velocity so where the derivative of negative 1.62t is just negative 1.62. So we can answer the question now. The acceleration due to gravity on the moon is negative 1.62 meters per second per second, or meters per second squared. Okay, so that's acceleration due to gravity on the moon. Okay, now we want to find the ratio of those two. We know here on Earth that gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. So we can take the ratio here. It's negative 9.8, which is Earth's gravity, divided by negative 1.62, which is the moon's gravity. All right, so when we calculate that out, the ratio is approximately six. Uh, so six to what? So that's how we find the acceleration due to gravity on the moon and how we compare it to 
uh, the acceleration due to gravity on Earth. All right, guys, uh, this was a short lecture just because I had to fill in on the, the part that got cut off on my last lecture, so you'll have to watch kind of two separate videos. But this one's, you know, more physics-like where we're understanding the difference between position, velocity, and acceleration. Because uh, eventually in a later chapter, I'm going to give you acceleration, and you're going to be able to tell me the position of the uh, whatever that function is based on, you know, the acceleration. We can work backwards. Um, you know, given some initial conditions and things like that. But that's, uh, you know, future, uh, future lecture in Chapter 4. So, else, guys, uh, that's it. If you have any questions, email me. Let me know if we need a Zoom meet or Team meet or anything else like that. Else, have a great day. And I want to say, you know, try to watch the live lectures, too, because I do a lot more examples in the live lectures. This is more just, you know, basic to get you covered if you're, if you've been absent or you're a distance learner or those sort of things. So else guys have a great day. I'll see you in class.